and welcome to another Fountain Insight video. I'm delighted today to be joined by Chris Finch and Brian Norman of Earthware, the geeks, the geniuses at Earthware. I'm so excited to be speaking with, with you two today about digital transformation within the pharma sector. It's going to be a fascinating topic. But before we kick off, Chris, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thanks, Chris. I'm really, really delighted to be here. Good. I'm pleased you're delighted. And Brian, how are you? Yeah, I'm great as well. Just uh, busy as we all are rushing to Christmas at the moment. We had an off-air we had an off-air conversation about that fabulous acoustic guitar. So we'll, we'll try not to talk about that too much today. I'm just trying to just trying to figure out, Brian, which of us is the geek and which of us is the genius. I think I you might know, be both. <laughs> <laughs> Jens, let's let's get straight into this now. Let's kick off with this big question. What challenges are the pharma industry facing right now in terms of digital transformation? Because it's quite a, it's a it's a heavily regulated industry with with quite a slow uptake in terms of digital transformation. That that's a fair statement to make, isn't it? it yes, yeah, it is. And um I think you know, if you look at any of the research that's been done by you know the big consulting firms like McKinsey, the pharma industry has always shown up as, as the laggards when it comes to, to digital adoption. And you know, was it ever thus? It's been like that for, for the entirety that I've worked in the industry, which is which is twenty years. Um, but I think I think COVID has really triggered a a mindset shift within the industry. Um, you know, for for the last hundred for the for the first hundred years, it's it's kind of gone from being small apothecaries right through to these multi global global um inter international organizations and a, and a one and a half trillion dollar industry and that was all built on on an old model a business model which was which was sales reps going out and talking to healthcare professionals and all of a sudden literally overnight you know that was that the rug was whipped from under the feet of pharma and they, that business model was was gone and they've had to adapt um so i think we've seen a sudden realization and a sudden rapid adoption of of digital channels and digital technology because they've really been forced to do that you know they couldn't put it off any longer um so it's been whilst it's been really challenging i've actually somebody working in the industry i find it really refreshing um because it's, it's it's forced the industry to think differently it certainly has been refreshing brian what's your take on that question well i think just kind of adding on to chris is that i think the other thing is it has shown the farm industry that actually maybe there isn't so much to be scared of that they had so now they've had to do it i think actually people are a little bit more comfortable in realizing maybe this isn't as, as bad as or hard as we thought it would be and and also just that their clients have been through exactly the same thing so we've seen the nhs responding in amazing ways obviously with their remote kind of access and so i think everyone has just hopefully caught up with those of us that have been suggesting this is possible and, and doable for many many years so i think we're really hopefully on that that verge of acceptability which was probably going to take a decade to arrive has turned up in eight months um and, and everyone has suddenly become all more comfortable now so we've got literally everyone from from your grandmas to your kids more than happy with doing these kind of things and, and i think that really is is the change in the industry that people have accepted maybe it's maybe it's doable maybe we can get on with this love that love that sentiment brian i love that and i love the fact that it's kind of gone from a to z really quickly because as you say it's, it, yes it's shocking but it seems like this industry needs this right now and this is where people like yourselves and, and fountain can really help these types of companies but it's very easy chris and brian for us to just sit here and talk shop and say yeah you know it's great it's lovely but, but how can people in the world of pharma truly embrace digital transformation how can they dive in without making too many mistakes um i think for me i mean th there has to be a bit of a mindset change in pharma from the way that we used to approach our communication strategy and our communication plans when i when i was a brand manager i'm going back kind of 15 years now it used to be we used to say you know who who do we want to talk to what do we want to say how do, how do we want to say it? And that was kind of that formed the structure of our communication plan. But actually, if you if you if you're adopting digital, you know, digital is much more people people are coming to you for for information. So you you have to much more put yourself in the shoes of of the of the end user of, of of the customer or of the patient of the healthcare professional, and actually ask what is it they want, what do they want to achieve, what are the problems they have that that we can solve, and if you do that, then it kind of starts to fall into play. You know, the, the channels that you should use and the the digital mechanisms that you you want to use to reach these people becomes quite obvious when you when you try and look at the world from their point of view. Brian, thoughts? Well, I think the, the other kind of opportunity is um, people will fall back on what they've traditionally seen in digital. So you kind of email shots going out and your brand websites and all this kind of stuff. 
And I'm hoping that now everyone's been used to Zoom calls that are dreamt up in five minutes that we all jump on and do something that the people will see digital content as maybe we can do something a little bit more interactive, a little bit more personalized. Um, so just simple things like um, going from having websites or, or phone numbers to ring up MedInfo and having that kind of information to 24 seven available kind of personal assistance or things like that. So I think it's just understanding that just going and doing the digital things we've all been doing for 10 years is, is a missed opportunity. What is it now we can do that can be much more engaging with people, much more interesting, um, much more personalized without crazy costs? I mean, you're not going to literally personalize everything, but you, you can create experiences where they are targeted at particular people or they can choose and pick parts of their experience. So I think it is, is how, how do we not just go for what we know we can do? How do we, how do we go for the next thing now everyone's a little bit more comfortable? Love that. I, th I think the other thing that, that that's that's really helping farmer at the moment to do this is it used to be that nothing nothing would ever get released to 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 a client um, to a healthcare professional or to patients until it was you know fully signed off and it was the absolute perfect solution you know so, so companies would spend months and months and months developing and tweaking and refining and approving and nothing would ever get out there for months yeah. and months and months. But what we're seeing now is this much more agile approach from pharma companies. They're starting to accept that actually starting small and trying something out and getting something into the market and, and learning on the journey is actually a much more effective way to do it. So we are seeing lots of pharma, of pharma companies and a lot of our clients coming to us and saying, actually, how, how can we do this agile thing? Because it, it suddenly it makes a lot of sense to us. You know, we don't have to have a perfect solution from the get-go. We can get something out there and learn, learn on the journey. And... That's really how I think that's and again, COVID's kind of accelerated this a little bit. It's forcing people to actually mm. just be a bit more agile and get things out there. I think you're totally right. And in the world of digital marketing, as well as very specifically, you're, you're missing out on so many valuable touch points with your prospective customer or, or client or patient in that time. So being agile is definitely the right the, the right avenue to go down. And this is an unplanned question, but I feel like I'm going to ask this to you guys. It's really important. What are the mistakes that pharma companies do you, have made this year, and and how do they how do they best navigate those moving into twenty twenty one? What what can they do differently to to improve and to work with people like you guys? I'll I'll have a quick go at this, Brian, and then you probably give the the, the, the good answer in a second. But um, I think one of the one of the mistakes I commonly see is is pharma companies taking content that's been developed for use you know, by a sales rep in a face-to-face -face interaction and just kind of repurposing it lock stock for use online. But that, that doesn't always work because if somebody's, somebody's consuming content themselves, that's very, you have very different needs to when you're consuming content that's being given to you by somebody, somebody that's facilitating that conversation, a sales rep or something. Um, so I think it's important that pharma really thinks about what's, What's the situation that the, the user's in, the person that's consuming this content is in? Um, what is it that they, they actually need? And how do we adapt our messages? How do we adapt the, you know, the imagery that we use? How, how do we use different media to convey that message in a way that actually fits for that, that scenario, that situation that that person is in, rather than just taking something we prepared to be delivered by a sales rep and just bunging it online? Yeah, I think I think that's a really good point. And, I, and as I say, that, that was an unplanned question, but I feel like pharma companies need to they need to know this stuff. They really do. It's super important. Let's um, you know, talk about now moving into 2021, if you don't mind, gents. What what do you hope slash forecast for this world in 2021? I'm really hoping that because people have now experienced some of the stuff that that they haven't done before. They've, they've tried out, they've had a go with this kind of stuff. Um, we find that if, if if a client, I mean, all our clients are really busy, that this isn't, digital isn't necessarily their, their day job, their everyday job. Um, but we find projects where the client really gets deeply involved in coming up with the ideas, creating the content, all this kind of stuff are the projects that work the best. And that's kind of why we do the whole agile approach that involves people in it. So I'm really hoping that this kind of period of time has shown people that they, they don't need to get the agency necessary to do everything. And they certainly don't need the agency to create all the ideas. I mean, we have 12 year olds who are amazing YouTube stars. So they pretty much prove that it's child's play. So I think some of our, our clients actually starting to create their own content. Again, back to that personalization. I mean, all of us can quickly whip up a video that introduces something. Yes, it needs to be compliant. Yes, we need to be aware of what's going on. Um, I'm really hoping that both our clients are a bit braver in creating some of these things, but also that 
their companies, their IT kind of infrastructure support them in in learning these new skills. I mean, mm. we're all sitting on a on a tool now that's that's streaming live video, and I suspect probably twelve months ago, most of us had never touched this before. Yeah. Um, and and so I think there is an opportunity. These are off the shelf things. You can go and have a play. I'm really hoping that that is the opportunity to get them more involved in our world because I think between us we'll produce better things then. I, I love that, Brian. This, it completely makes sense. And, and we've probably done this in the wrong order, but it's probably worth mentioning now. How can Earthware help people in 2021? You know, let, let's understand a little bit more about who you guys are and what you do. That should, probably should have been the question at the start, but let's chuck it in at the end. I think it's really important to know. Can you give us a little bit of an intro for people that don't know um, just how brainy you guys are? <laughs> um, sure. So, uh I mean, Earthware, we're, we're a digital creative agency, right? And I think people, when they say, what do you do? I think they say, expect us to say we build websites or we build apps, we, whatever. And we do all those things. Um, but actually, the heart of what we do is we, we're, we're a problem-solving business. That's what we try and do. So we like to sit down with clients, unpick a problem that they've got. And that might be you know, an, an internal problem with the business. It might be a problem that healthcare professionals got using their product it might be a problem that the patient's got um but we'd like to sit down and, and explore that from the point of view of whoever's problem it is and and come up with with new solutions and you know solutions we've we've developed in the last 18 months include anything from from just box standard websites through to chatbots through to you know we've created apps that are, are class one medical devices that are helping to to potentially diagnose patients with disease um, so a whole spectrum of things, um, but ultimately it's about solving problems and picking and choosing the right technology to solve that problem in the most efficient and effective way. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much to both of you, Brian and Chris. Thank you both of you for, for coming on and sharing your, your insights today with Fountain. I really appreciate your time. Pleasure. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for inviting us. And thank you, thank you to you, who, whoever's watching this video now. We really appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're watching it on Facebook, give it a like and share. If you're watching on Twitter, give it a retweet. And if you've got any questions for the Brains of Earth, where I've not, I've, I've not really told them this, but let's give you the opportunity to ask them questions off air as well. Give us a tweet. They're on Twitter. We're on twi Twitter as well. Make sure that you get your questions in if you've got any thing that you need help with. Thank you again, gents, and I'll see you next time.